we might make the case that the New Testament is inspired by God. We see God's fingerprints on it, but exactly what books would fall into that category? So you see the relationship there. And this raises the question then, how were the New Testament books in particular here chosen as part of the canon? What is up all my truth seekers? This is Pastor Jacob with another biblical first responder video. And this is Witness Wednesday. So um, today I wanted to talk about why we only have 66 books. So this is a question that keeps coming up from time to time. And I wanted to make sure that I took my time to answer it and to be as thorough as possible with it in the shortest amount of time. So um, why we only have 66 books. Okay, so long and short of it is that when you uh, read the Bible, when you read the New Testament, Jesus affirmed the Old Testament. You would hear Jesus talk about the law and the prophets. You would hear Jesus talk about these different things as he would do his sermons to his audiences throughout the New Testament. You would hear him affirm the Old Testament scriptures. And, and um, even as he walked down the road to Emmaus, um, he was telling them all through the Old Testament. Testament scriptures, how they were speaking of him. And he would affirm the Old Testament very often in his uh, speech in the New Testament. So then we see the Old Testament affirmed by the words of Jesus Christ himself, our Lord. He referenced the Old Testament all the time. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus would always reference the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. It is written. It is written. He always said it. When it came down to marriage, Jesus said, it is written. When it came uh, uh, down to being tempted by Satan there in uh, Matthew chapter 4, it is written. It is written. It is written. He always referenced the scriptures of the Old Testament. So then we know the Old Testament is affirmed by Jesus Christ himself. So then you have the New Testament. Now you understand that Jesus handpicked the apostles. That is why I don't care to hear nothing about nobody calling themselves an apostle today because if Jesus didn't pick you, you ain't an apostle. That's how I feel about it. I ain't fight nobody. You have whatever title you want. But if Jesus did not pick you, if you didn't witness the resurrected Jesus Christ with your own two eyes, you are not an apostle. If you weren't taught by Jesus Christ himself, you are not an apostle. Period. Barnabas, who was there, uh, he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't taught directly by Christ, nor was he handpicked by Christ. Barnabas wasn't an apostle. So if Barnabas, who was there and alive, living with Paul and them guys, if he's not an apostle, uh, madam and sir, you are nowhere near an apostle. No ma'am, no ham, no burger. So anyway, the New Testament, Christ handpicked his apostles, with Paul being the last. Well, Jesus trained 12 different people and some more, if you consider Paul kind of after the cross, um, to follow after him, to take his message after them, after him, and promise them in the Upper Room Discourse in John chapter 15 that he would bring to remembrance all the things that he had taught them so they would be able to communicate to others. And because of this, because of their so close association with Jesus, this group of men became the standard or the rule, or to put it simply, the canon. So the early church looked to the apostles for the authoritative word about what was sound doctrinally. What happened when the apostles died? They're gone. Was there a whole new generation of apostles that had the same authority? It doesn't look that way. No biblical evidence for that. What ended up happening with the early church is they said, well, since the apostles are now gone, their writings still remain. The things that they said and instructed us regarding are still here. Those things are the authority now that those men are no longer alive. And when he handpicked his apostle, every book in the New Testament, every single one of them is written either by an apostle or written for an apostle. Meaning that you got the Pauline epistles written by Paul. Hebrews, even though we don't know who wrote Hebrews, most people believe, most scholars, not just people, most scholars would believe that it's Paul. 
But even if it wasn't Paul, some would like to believe, and I would kind of believe that it was probably maybe Paul or Barnabas. But either way, if it was Paul, Paul was an apostle. And if it wasn't Paul, say it was Barnabas, Barnabas was Paul's right-hand man for a time. So then therefore, even if it wasn't Paul and it was Barnabas that wrote Hebrews, it was still written under the authority of an apostle. Then you go to uh, Matthew and John. These were both apostles who wrote their books. Then you go to uh, the book of Mark, which was an account of the apostle Peter. So that was written under apostolic authority. And we know the apostles were given the, the authority, the keys to the kingdom by Christ himself, that they were able to basically be the government for Christ when he ascended. They were to continue and give the commands to the church. The apostles were able to give command and write scripture. That is how they get to write the New Testament. Uh, this is a complicated process in some ways, but there are some general guidelines that really, I think, drove the process that will help us to understand. First, a mistaken notion. It isn't like a bunch of people who had authority in themselves got together and just picked the ones that they said were the right New Testament books. That's not the way it worked. If you think of the word canon, the word canon means authority. That is, what are the authoritative works in themselves that we go to in the New Testament era to know about God and his plan for salvation? And so then the one thing you may have a question about when you say, well, Jude referenced the book of Enoch. Well, Jude referencing the book of Enoch is most likely because it was a well-generated writing at the time. But nowhere in the Bible is the book of Enoch affirmed. Nowhere in the Bible is the book of Enoch referenced other, other than that one area. And that is no different than when Paul was on uh, at the Areopagus and he was quoting the, the pagan philosophers there to the unknown God. He was using the things that they were familiar with to bring them to Jesus Christ, to bring them to God. Yet that wasn't him affirming the pagan philosophers. He said, yeah, to the unknown God. Well, I'm about to tell you who this unknown God is so you can know him. So don't let that throw you off and don't let people use that to try to make you read the Apocrypha. Now, so now we understand why the canon is closed at 66. And when Jesus uh, finished giving John the Revelation at the very end, he said, no man add to the prophecy of this book. Any man add or take away, let his name be taken out of the land's book of life. So then anything that comes after, that was written after the Revelation, which a lot of the apocryphal books were written second century and a lot of, a, a lot of that time, you're out. You're out. You're out. Because you missed, you missed the cutoff date. When Jesus gave the last Revelation, in Revelation, it was cut off. So then, it is not the church who created the canon. It is not Constantine who created the canon. Yes, they did have uh, 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 churches sit down and, and, and come to a council and say, hey, this is what we're going to use and this is what we're going to leave out. Did they do that? Absolutely. The point that I want to leave with you is it's not a haphazard affair. It wasn't just a matter of voting by a bunch of people who saw themselves as the authority. It was rather an act of Christian leaders who recognized the authority inherent in those books, principally because of the apostolic connection that those books had. And that is the foundational way in which the New Testament documents were viewed as authoritative and part of the canon. But they didn't, Jesus affirmed the canon. So we can go back to the scripture and see what Jesus affirmed by what he referenced when he spoke. And because he chose these apostles, we can use their writings as scripture because he chose them. And he said, the Holy Spirit will uh, uh, bring all things to your remembrance and it, he'll teach you all things. And he'll guide you in all, uh, all, all truth. So then they were given that authority by Jesus Christ himself. However, when you come to the Apocrypha, you have a bunch of things that are contradictions. When you look in different books of the Apocrypha, uh, 
you have uh like Maccabees, I believe. The Maccabees came in that space between Malachi and Matthew where God wasn't speaking, where, where, where there was no more speaking from God to Israel. So if God is silent, you can write all you want, but it is not divinely inspired. We cannot consider that canon. It might have been good stuff, but we cannot consider that divinely inspired, breathed out by God. You don't see none of that with the Apocrypha. You don't see uh, 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 Paul and them boys and Peter and them boys uh, referring to Maccabees or none of that stuff. You don't hear them talk about none of that. They talk about the Old Testament. They bring up the Old Testament scriptures. They bring up those and nothing else. So it is as if, if, if Jesus didn't recognize the existence of the Apocrypha, if the apostles who Jesus handpicked did not recognize the existence of the Apocrypha, then neither will the church. The true church shall not recognize the existence of the Apocrypha. When you read many of the books of the Apocrypha, at least a few of them are rife with uh, angel worship. And we know that in our Bibles, that when the angels were being worshipped or when people tried to worship the angels, the angels were quick to tell them, no, get up. I'm your brother. No, don't worship me. Worship God alone. So then if in the Apocrypha you have books where angels are being worshipped, then you got to turn that down because it contradicts scripture. Don't put it on the same pedestal as scripture. Don't esteem it as highly as scripture. And don't live your life based on it like you live your life based on scripture. Scripture is the 66 books, Genesis to Revelation, nothing more, nothing after, nothing in between.